But here's a really interesting story. The pro-abortion lobby, one of their activists, showing essentially their true colors and the kind of almost the near genocidal mentality these uh, bunch of Satanists have. Here's the kind of reality. This is on, um, this is on covered on Life News. This is a uh, media host, which is not surprising. You got the left-wing media continuing to show the, themselves the kind of individu individuals they are. It says here, uh, MSNBC host Tiffany Cross suggests hungry children would have been better off aborted. Yeah, this is the kind of mentality these people have. But it says here in the article, of all the arguments made in favor of abortion, the most heartless and grotesque are those suggesting that unborn children would be, would be better off dead than having them deal with difficulties in life. Yet on her MSNBC show on Saturday morning, Tiffany Cross uh, trotted out a false and misleading statistic with the implication that some or all supposedly 17 million hungry children in America would have been better off aborted. Said Cross, this is what she said, quote, a person's ability and choice to bring life in this world is their choice, but in America, where guns are the leading, leading cause of death uh, for children, an AR-15 has more rights than a woman does. Okay, I want to just retort to something on, on this real quick. You know, one of the stupid arguments I've heard for gun control in America is, well, they, they, they only had muskets back in uh, the 1700s when the, when the, thing, when the Second Amendment was, was uh, made and was written and codified. But you know what else they didn't have back then? They didn't have the 19th Amendment back then either, which gave women the right to vote. They also did not have abortion back then either. They didn't have abortion rights either. So if we're going to be consistent with their logic and say we can only have what they had back then in terms of we can only have muskets, those are the only guns that are apparently allowed, well then I guess we should get rid of women's rights too, women's rights to vote, because they didn't have that back then. The 19th, 19th Amendment was not written until the uh, early 20th century, nearly 200 years later. So just their logic is ridiculous. If, there is, if we can only have muskets because that's all they had back then, well, we refer to gun orders in America. I'm not American, but let's be consistent and say, well, they didn't have the 19th Amendment, so let's, let's scrap that as well. And, that, and by the way, you say that to them, that will silence them. I mean, that will either get you blocked or will get you uh, just have, have them have a hissy fit against you because they don't like being, uh, they don't like losing an argument. But it says here, continuing on in the article, let's first consider Cross's absurd argument that AR-15s have more rights than women. Inanimate objects have no rights. Rather, the Second Amendment recognizes the right of people to keep and bear arms. Let's focus on Cross's mention of the 17 million children who are supposedly "quote unquote" hungry. Does she mean that? Does, does she mean to suggest that many, if not all of them, would be better off never being born, given a voice? How many of those 17 million do you think would prefer to live, even if life came with some challenges? And then there is Cross's fraudulent claim that 17 million children in America are "quote hungry" unquote. This implies that any given moment that uh, uh, there are that many hungry children. Shirley Cross must know that this is false. Hunger insecurity has been conflated by activists with actual hunger. Uh, with actual hunger, it means that only the only uh, the, uh, only one point during the year a family had concerns about um, meeting dietary needs. It does not mean that anyone actually experienced ever experienced hunger, let alone that all are experiencing hunger on a daily basis. I also point out too that the people, the person who is saying this, this MSNBC host, I guarantee you she doesn't have to worry about the kind of you know average problems the average citizen has. See, mostly it's these rich Hollywood celebrities and media personalities and everything else. They don't have the, the complications the average citizen has. So they can, they, can, they, can say, they can easily say things that go, you don't, you don't need guns to defend yourself. You don't need this, you don't need that. You know, come from people who live in these gated communities with armed guards or who hire armed security to protect them. You know, it's a bunch of hypocrisy. This is why I really don't take these celebrities or, or any of these like personalities seriously when they try to put themselves in the shoes of just average people because they don't have to go through those same struggles anymore at least. They may have had to in the beginning, but that has been long gone. So it says here in the article, continuing on, in fact, for children in, for, for children in low-income homes, obesity is much more prevalent than hunger. According to the Journal for the American Medical Association, seven times as many low-income children are obese as are underweight. Uh, Cross made another false and misleading statement. She claimed that the Supreme Court want, wants to mandate birth. No, the court's decision in no way regulates women to give birth. It simply recognized the inconvertible fact that the Constitution does not create a right to abortion, and thus that our individual states, and thus that our in, that the individual states are free to legislate on the matter. Cross seemed to imply that the court's ruling would quote mandate birth unquote by striking down state laws permitting abortion. This is entirely this is entirely untrue. If indeed, as Cross as Cross claimed, a majority of Americans opposed overturning of Roe, it could well be, be because. Many got false and misleading information about it from people like Cross. Exactly, the whole thing of overturning Roe v. Wade, it was mostly a, a matter of states' rights. It was simply saying that, that the federal government will not, you know, mandate this kind of stuff in states. It just it should be a state's right. This is how this is actually how America was meant to function. Okay? The individual states had their rights. 
Okay, the federal government was there in the beginning, but the the states have their own rights. See, this has always been an argument against the abortion and also same sex marriage too. That it's a matter of states' rights. You know, they, they shouldn't force this kind of stuff. They should let the states decide for themselves, basically. So it's funny how they're saying things like, oh, this is against democracy, they're enemies of democracy. They ignore the fact that giving uh, states the right to choose for themselves is actually not uh, against democracy, which, you know, their definition of democracy is a whole thing of itself, but it's actually the most American thing you can possibly do, give them states' rights. And by the way, too, the whole thing of democracy, there's all kinds of problems with democracy, which is basically mob rule. But when I say democracy, I'm referring to what they think is democracy, which is the Constitutional Republic of America which is a different thing. A constitutional republic and a democracy are not the same thing. So when I say democracy, I'm referring to it in the context of they think America is a democracy, but they're referring to the constitutional republic, misleadingly believing it's a democracy. But side issue, it says here in the article, and finally Cross again uh, resorted to her own shot-worn slur that on Justi Justice Amy Comey Barrett, uh, Cross opened the show by welcoming viewers to Gilead, which uh, and smeared the brilliant and accomplished Barrett as, quote, a handmaiden. On her MSNBC show, Tiffany Cross cited uh, citing the supposed presence of 17 million hungry children in America as the right to preserve the right to preserve the right to abortion was sponsored in part by Wayfair, Subway, Walgreens, and Facebook, of course. Uh, life site, oh yeah, I already read that part right there, but basically, essentially, uh, she's essentially saying things she has no clue of what she's talking about. You know, and I've also I also love the irony too. I just want to say this. I love the irony too. How, whenever you have you know a woman or a person of color or a minority who normally is trodden out by the De by the liberal Democrats as some kind of you know protected need, in need of protective status, whenever that min minority goes against the Democratic agenda, I mean they treat they treat that person worse than any white person they go after. I mean it's insane how how the one of the justices was a uh, one of the guys was a black man. And he was going against the whole thing. Uh, uh, Clarence Thomas is the guy's name. They're they're attacking him more than anybody, more than the other white justices who voted against it, which goes to show they don't really care about minorities. They only care about min minorities who agree with them. Basically, if you're a minority and you don't agree with them, you're just as bad as any you know white supremacist in their mind. So, it's a whole other issue of itself. It's a bunch of garbage. But anyway, we wanted to point that out. So the tr the pro-abortion lobby keeps exposing themselves for the uh, eugenicist type thugs that they are. So anyway, don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.